Good morning. So my name is April Zare, and I'm the new associate pastor here at KZMC. I know to most of you I may look familiar as my husband and I have been attending uh, Zurich for about five or six years now. Um, but now I'm officially in this role and a lot of my focus will be on kids ministry and pastoral care. So you'll see me doing these devotionals um, every once in a while. And as soon as I'm able to, I look forward to being able to come in and visit with you and pray with you and just get to know you. All right, so this morning's devotional uh, I'm going to share, and it's mainly from 2 Corinthians 4, verses 7 to 10. And I've entitled this is, I'm going through, but I'm coming out. So somebody once said that life is not fair. Things don't always work out just the way we want them to. People have the tendency to say or do certain things in a negative way because they feel as though life dealt them a bad hand or things didn't work out the way they wanted. There's a saying that goes, the world can be a very harsh place, bring it on. This type of statement can be made if you have the right attitude and outlook on life situations. Nobody ever said that it's always going to be peaches and cream which, by the way, is my favorite kind of corn. So if that's the case, we must have the right attitude to help us make it through. I've learned that it's really not what comes your way, but rather how you handle it that makes the difference. Generally speaking, there are at least two types of people in the world, the pessimist and the optimist. The pessimist is one who has a tendency to stress the negative or unfavorable, or to take the gloomiest possible view concerning things and situations in life. The words, it's never going to work. I just can't make it. I can't take it anymore. And when is this ever going to end? I'm sure we've all said that one lately. Are common for people with a slightly more negative outlook on life. The optimist, on the other hand, is one who usually expects a favorable outcome. This person doesn't have the pro have a problem saying, and you know all things work together for the good. If God be for us, who can be against us? And what the devil meant for evil, God turned it for my good. It's all about attitude. Here are a few other things I've learned. We'll never be able to enjoy a rainbow without a little rain. We'll never know what it's like to be healed until we've been sick. We'll never be able to know real joy until we ex experience some sorrow. We'll never know what a good day is until we've lived through a bad day. Have you heard this before? When life, bring, when life begins to throw lemons your way, don't complain. Get some water and sugar and make some lemonade. The attitude should be, I'm going through but I'm coming out. Our text is found in the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth. Paul was one who knew a lot about going through. As a preacher of the gospel, he spent most of his time traveling, planting churches, and ensuring the good news of Jesus was being shared. He was a man who knew the ins and outs of adversity. 2 Corinthians 11, 24-25 gives us an idea as to his going through. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. This only gives us some of the things he went through. He was also jailed for delivering a demon-possessed woman and once he was put in a basket and let down a wall to avoid a man from apprehending him. Throughout all of that he went through, he never let it stop him from doing the work and knowing that his work was not in vain. His first letter to the Corinthians was to establish a doctrine concerning Christian life and conduct. The second letter was sent to comfort those who had repented as a result of his first letter to give instructions concerning collections for the poor saints, to vindicate his apostleship, and to warn those who were disobedient. Paul was sent to be a mouthpiece for God, 
an example of knowing that God can bring us through no matter what we go through in life. I'm thankful for the life of Paul because it gives me the hope of knowing that if God did it for him, he can surely do it for me too. So I want to focus on the idea and perspective that I'm going through hardships, disappointments, and hurts, but I'm coming out. There are three things I'd like to share that I believe will help us when we're going through. The first one is recognize where the power is. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, Paul begins to share with us concerning earthly treasures. In the East, it was the custom of the day to put treasured items in jars of clay to protect or preserve them from harm or abuse. The analogy made here is that our bodies are treasures and that God resides within us. Paul states in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. God could have set up any, a residence anywhere in the universe, but he decided to reside in us. The Bible declares that God is omni, omnipotent, sorry, which means he is all-powerful. All power in heaven and in earth is his to hold, use, and distribute as he sees fit. When he decides to reside in us, he brought his power with him as well thus making that power available to us. I can't do it on my own, but with God, I know that all things are possible. Jesus tells us in John 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The second thing is to recognize that trouble will come. In verses 8 and 9, if you haven't experienced trouble in your life already, just keep living. But I think we all have. Trouble has a way of finding us, and if we let it, it will try to take over our lives. Paul here uses some very unique words to describe the effects of the trouble that may come our way. Troubled means to be pressed, squeezed, oppressed, hedged, or in pressure. On every side means in every imaginable way and place and occasion. Yet not distressed means to keep in a narrow, crampled place to be crushed. Because God is with us, this will not happen to us. Persecuted means to oppress or harass with ill treatment. But not forsaken means to leave altogether, to abandon. Perplexed means to be at a loss, to be doubting, not knowing, questioning, wondering which way to go, what to do, and what to say. But not in despair means to be hopeless, to have no confidence or assurance, to be without any sense of security. Cast down means to be smitten down, struck down, or knocked down but not destroyed, means to perish, to die. As Christians, we know that we will fall, but that every time we do fall, we will rise again. We know that we, that we can get beaten, but never ultimately defeated. We may lose a battle, but we know that in the end, we can never lose the campaign. The third way of getting through is recognize that Jesus died to give us the victory. In John 10 verse 10 is a profound passage of scripture as it gives us one of the reasons Jesus came to the world. It states, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He had to be born so that he could die for us. His death was victory all by itself, as it was the power that defeated hell and the grave. Death couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him. Dying gave him the means necessary for resurrection, power, and victory. Because he died and rose, we have the victory.
I know that trouble will come our way. Right? I think we, we're all very well aware of that. But I also know that trouble won't last always. That same trouble will build us up and make us better for the kingdom's sake. I know that when trouble shows up, the Lord is already right there to help me with my trouble. Troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Perplexed, but not in despair. Cast down, but not destroyed. When the devil begins to throw negativity in our lives, we can count, continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. When the devil tries to bring us down, we can continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. When the devil tries to take us out, we can continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. So let's hold on to his hand because we are going through and we know that with God, we are coming out. So let's pray together. Dear God, this is a new day here that we've never lived before. It's full of unknown, but it's full of possibility. It's full of moments no one but you can see. Thank you for seeing ahead of me on my path and being there to catch me when I fall. I can only live one moment at a time. Help me to live in each moment knowing you are there. Your Holy Spirit dwells in me each moment, giving me comfort and guiding and directing me. Thank you for your grace and presence. Give me guidance and grace to walk in your light today. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you for letting me join with you today. And I look forward to um, providing more devotionals for you and also hopefully coming to see you. All right, take care. God bless.